So there's this crypto buzzword going around recently, DPIN. What is it? DPIN refers to infrastructure projects using tokenization to coordinate and incentivize their bootstrapping phase. Individuals build up the supply of the infrastructure in a decentralized manner and get rewarded with token incentives. The key idea is to flip the traditional model on its head. The traditional way is for corporations in telecommunications or energy to invest a lot of time and money into building and maintaining infrastructure. Web3 companies try to outsource this buildup and maintenance process to a token incentivized army of volunteers and monetize later once the coverage rate is high enough. So this is the same liquidity incentive principle used in other Web3 sectors, such as DeFi, yield farming, play to earn, or move to earn. The four categories in DPIM are cloud storage networks, so file storage, relational database, CDN and VPN networks, wireless networks, so 5G sensor networks, interconnected devices embedded with sensors that collect real-time data from the physical world, such as maps, energy networks, aggregate distributed energy sources to create a more resilient and efficient energy grid. What are the benefits of decentralized physical infrastructure or DPEM? So DPIN's declared goal is to create a more equitable and efficient process to bootstrap infrastructure networks compared to legacy companies' top-down, capital-intensive approach. So if you ask Web3 VCs like Multicoin Capital, they will extol the following benefits of the decentralized approach. You can build infrastructure 10 to 100x faster. It is better synced to hyper-local market needs. It can be far more cost-effective. It can be scaled across jurisdictions in a permissionless way. The network is credibly neutral and collectively owned. Blockchains support frictionless micropayments and integration with DeFi. That is, of course, the best case scenario. What are the trends in challenges of decentralized physical infrastructure or DPEM. So the combined market cap of the global top 10 cloud companies is $5 trillion. Not bad. If Web3 companies could take a tiny share of that market, they would be in fantastic shape. So Missouri sees several trends and challenges in this sector. Most people access the internet from a mobile device these days. Crypto is the one big exception, simply because much of it hasn't developed a good mobile interface. But to succeed, crypto will have to go mobile eventually. Technological trends like AI tools and more capable smartphones point towards more mobile traffic, not less. With the possibility to produce and consume content in a decentralized way, increasing, again, AI, the demand thereof will also increase, and with it the demand to access and store it, which concerns wireless and storage providers. So let's talk about some challenges. DPEN faces several challenges, explaining why the sector hasn't really taken off yet. For instance, as we will still explore further, the incentive models are highly dilutive and often sound better than they are in reality. The time horizon to build applications and demand is significantly longer than for mere consumer apps. The market is big, but companies compete compete against Web2 giants like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. In other words, disruptive legacy competition will take a lot more effort and professionalism than in purely retail-facing sectors of Web3 like gaming. What is the flywheel of decentralized physical infrastructure or DPIM? So Web3 enthusiasts point out that tokenization allows globally distributed individuals to collectively bootstrap network in a permissionless and trustless manner. Ideally, the costs of building the network are borne by and distributed among the supply side participants, usually retail, who get paid token incentives to bootstrap the network. Once the network has built an infrastructure base, it attracts users. These users pay to use the network and boost further supply side growth. So in the best case scenario, this kicks off the virtuous cycle of more demand fueling more supply, which is incentivized by token rewards that grow in value thanks to growing demand. Supporters argue that only tokenization via blockchains makes this incentive scheme possible. So is the decentralized physical infrastructure sector just a big Ponzi, or are there real use cases and demand? As so often, it depends. As good as some of these projects may sound, you should ask yourself, can this project really compete with established Web3 companies? And can it earn revenue to sustain massive token valuations? The deep end space is worth monitoring, but be careful about believing the hype, and as always, do your own research. And if you're interested in looking at some deep end projects, make sure to check out coinmarketcap.com.